Welcome back to Thinking It Through. We're here again. My name is Adam, and I've got Ethan and Daxton uh, with us today. And uh, they're going to be sharing about missions uh, this time of year, um, at least at Trinity. Uh, missions is something that we're trying to emphasize. Um, you know, everything we do takes planning, and so we really take this time of the year uh, to try to lay out some good plans and invite people to participate. And so part of that is uh, kind of being able to share you guys' story. Y'all had a very... Um, a uh, big summer, um, and not that we're just only talking about the summer. I know God's been doing a lot of things um, throughout your whole life, uh, but we certainly want to hear uh, a little bit about your summer and uh, just some of the ways that God has used you as y'all have answered the call to go live a missional life. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, just kind of just to jump in real quick, uh, and y'all can just kind of go back and forth if you want, or somebody can take the lead, and we'll go you know back and forth like I said, but just. Broad strokes. If somebody doesn't know you, you know, we were praying for you as a church all year or all summer, but just broad strokes, what were y'all doing this summer? So, my name's Daxton. Um, and so, this summer, uh, me and Ethan both went to South Asia um, up into a, a pretty rural uh, part of the Himalayas um, and to an unreached people group. Uh, where these people have never heard the name of Jesus before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were, so we were actually invited in uh, by the community there uh, to like live in their homes with them uh, and go and like teach in their schools and teach uh, the kids English. Uh, and so that was kind of our in uh, to get in. And we uh, went to go teach English and we taught English by, uh, well, our strategy was to go in and teach English by sharing the stories we know the best. The Bible. the Bible. Daxon, you said that these were an unreached people group. I know that there are different categories that the International Mission Board uses mm -hmm. uh, to classify people. What are those different categories? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. So I know they have unreached and unengaged. Unengaged. Um, unengaged. Um, that's where there's zero um, effort to even reach these people. Uh, they're not engaged at all. Um, there's no um, active, uh, I guess, like... Uh, evangelical like push to reach them uh, they're just they're just chilling and then this summer we actually helped to turn this unreached and unengaged group and bring them to a unreached group yeah. um, mm -hmm. and to help them become engaged um, and so unreached is just uh, zero not a lot of people believe in the Bible uh, I mean the place we were at they didn't have any scripture in their language and it was just it was, it was kind of heartbreaking to be there um, and then reached would be over that percentage of, of people that are evangelical. Yeah. I mean, it's probably, um, I don't know what your experience has been as you've talked to different folks about y'all's trip. But, um, I mean, even just to, to think about it, the fact that there are people in this world who are unreached, but even further unengaged, that there's no gospel presence. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a fact, that's a reality that is heavy, um, that is hard to just gloss over you know what I mean mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that that was eye-opening for you guys and uh, and honestly it's part of why we're trying to think this through with you right now um, is because um, God, you know God is at work and God's doing um, he's moving and he's calling people into relationship and uh, the truth is that he wants us to be a part of that mm -hmm. and whether we like it or not there are people out there who are totally even unengaged like that's a sobering reality for sure that, uh, that we've got to be mindful of, prayerful of, and, um, and do something about, right? You know, this summer when y'all were there, it was, uh, it was a, a, a privilege of the church to be praying for you guys. And so I know that y'all had quite the experiences there. Uh, tell, us, um, tell us some of the training that goes in before you launch out into a trip like that. What did y'all do? Well, before we actually shipped out and got on a plane, uh, we went to an IMB training site, and we stayed there for about a week, uh, training in uh, cross-cultural evangelism, like how to share the gospel cross-culturally, how to use a translator, it's culture training, how to cross over into a culture that is completely different, um, even security training, like how to how to go through customs, how to live in a place that it's illegal to share the gospel. Um, so that th there's a lot with that, but. Very thorough training. Yeah, just the thought of uh, having to carefully share. Um, there's a lot there for sure. How did how did you guys get to the place individually? I want to hear from both of you uh, where you knew, all right, I'm called to go. I think for me, because um, Ethan last summer went to uh, Zambia, and I always told him, like, I'm not, I can't go all summer. Like, there's, I just can't go all summer. 
Um, and so I remember sitting in class um, one day, um, you know, and I'm just, I just, I think the Lord just put on my heart right then. I was like, you know, you don't need to worry about working this summer. You don't need to worry. I'll take care of it. Like money shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue. I'm, <clears throat> you're called to go this summer. Um, I talked to Ethan about options. Um, I talked to our BCM director about options. Um, and so I knew I wanted to go all summer. I didn't know what that looked like. Yeah. Um, and so I was looking at some options with the BCM. I was looking at some options with um, uh, the IMB. And eventually I talked to Ethan and Ethan was like, hey, I'm going to uh, this place in South Asia. You've got a spot on the team if the Lord's calling you. Mm -hmm. And so that's cool because uh, you went to Costa Rica last year. I went to Costa Rica last year for a week. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was really cool to like it, it. Costa Rica, it's super open. You can you can go as a missionary there. Um, it's actually considered a reached country. Um, mm -hmm. But it was super cool to go over there and see how an actual missionary family works and how a, um, a missionary actually functions and then to do missionary work. It's, it's in a great opportunity just like uh, it's like a first first mission trip yeah. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I think having that first week of going to Costa Rica really helped me um, spend all summer in this place. How did I feel called? Well, I mean, obviously I felt like a burden for the lost peoples of the world, but I guess I never really felt called per se. Um, I, I mean, I'm a Christian. I, Jesus saved me of my sins, and he's not just my savior, but he's my Lord, he's my master. And when I read the Great Commission, when he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, uh, I took it seriously. I took that as not just a, you know, we, we, we call that the Great Commission, but it, it's not the great suggestion, it's the Great Commission. And I took it seriously. And so I guess two years ago now, I was when I got serious in my faith and I read that and I said, okay, God, where am I going? And I uh, went to the, uh, the missions night at our BCM mm -hmm. and they had pe people from the IMB there, and this lady was talking about these teams to Africa, and I just signed my name down and went. Yeah. And it was as simple as that. I, I, read, I read the Great Commission, and I was like, okay, as a Christian, I'm going to go because I'm going to obey you, Jesus. And then I went to Zambia, um, and actually, I, uh, I got back from the trip, and um, I was talking to the leader of the, the missions board that was there, and he was asking me, like what skills I had in ministry that I could maybe use for a future trip in missions. I said this as a joke, not like thinking he would actually find some use to it. But I told him, I was like, well, I worked as like a backpacking guide and I've always spent a lot of time in uh, the outdoor scene. And that's when he was like, well, hey, we've got a team going to South Asia to the Himalayas and it's going to be super rural, camping, carrying weight the whole thing and he was like, would you go? And yeah, I was just like, it was a no brainer, I went. That's awesome. Uh, I remember talking to you just about your Eagle Scout stuff and you know, doing all of that and just landing at this place where it was so obvious that the Lord was preparing you mm -hmm. um, for this task through, you know, hobbies and different activities that you had been a part of for a long time. And so, uh, so one thing, and I think this is a good thing, one thing that I hear from both of y'all, and that someone could interpret, I don't think it's the case, but they could say, wow, those are kind of almost anticlimactic calling stories. <laughs> that's, that's great. Here's what I'm saying. Um, I think we're all called. Mm -hmm. and, and for both of you who literally just spent a whole summer of your life in an unreached rule um, across the world place, it started with a very simple yes. Mm -hmm. A very simple yes. Um, to a short-term mission trip and and um, and to being willing to go and and the Lord is is using that and and here's the thing like the the goal of missions isn't just to say okay I've gone mm. but rather it's the work that you're doing it's the ongoing work that the Lord is doing and everything that He's going to use you uh, for moving forward you know whether that's encouraging people right now just about taking faith seriously and going or or it's about uh, potentially leading trips in the future. And uh, we talked about that. Um, uh, and, and just helping mobilize people to go, but then also to, as you go, carry this same mm -hmm. emphasis no matter what you're doing. You know, um, you guys are in a, a, a time of life where I'm so proud 
that you're using the the season and the preparation and the um, just the phase that you're in to be very intentional with ministry. Um, Dax, I don't know how to, to segue to it. Just tell us. Um, I know that uh, you, you, there, there's some other opportunities coming up. Mm-hmm. And so just as much as you want to share about that, we want to hear about it. For sure. This summer, um, kind of like you were talking about, like, I think we're all called to go. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the big things they harped on at training when we went uh, before we hit the mission field, and when we got back, we had a debrief um, time with that same uh, group of people. Um, they just harped on, like, um, you should go as far as you can um, to as many people as you can until God tells you to stop. Um, and so, like, the Great Commission is called to go. Um, and, like, it's, I don't think it's a special calling. I think um, it's just something we're all called to do, and it's when the Lord tells you to stop um, and stay there. And so uh, I think the Lord put on my heart this summer. It's like anybody can do anything for two years. Um, and so um, talked it over with my fiancé now, and I think, well, I, I know we are committed to doing journeyman for two years. Um, whenever I get out of college, whatever that looks like, Lord willing, we're going to go on the mission field for two years. Um, and so I'm super, I'm super excited about and it's also kind of scary. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, for sure. And then so also this summer uh, with the church, with Trinity, um, I'll be leading a Nehemiah Teams trip, or NT for teens trip. So anybody between the ages of 14 and 18 that's in high school or um, just graduated um, can go on this trip, um, and it'll be an amazing opportunity. Uh, it'll be for about three weeks unto an unreached island um, in the Philippines. So it'd be super cool. That's cool, man. I know it can probably be scary to say, uh, you know, plans like that, but um, yeah. you saying it allows us as a church to come alongside. For sure. And say, um, you know, we're not, we're here to help hold you accountable, but we're also here to encourage mm-hmm. and to try to resource and to partner with you. So that's super cool just to hear me. And um, I know that there are other opportunities out there, and uh, as I think about the um, the teams for this summer, um, that's very much a um, an invitation, right? Like, yeah. this is not like the teams aren't set. Like, we need people to go. And so, if you're watching this, listening to this, uh, 14 to 18. 14 to 18, any guys? Yeah, right now it's a guys trip. Yeah. Um, but uh, boy, what a what a huge opportunity. Uh, to go and to share. That's super cool, man. So, Ethan, tell us a little bit about, all right, y'all, y'all, have got, y'all been to a context that not a lot of people have been to. Um, just some of the challenges about trying to share the gospel. To start, um, and there's, it is, like, in the country we went to, it is wildly abnormal to be a Christian. Uh, and that is super abnormal to us because here, it's super abnormal to not be a Christian, Yeah. you know? And so to go there, it's like, like nobody's Christians. And so the only, um, like our tour guide, our trekking guide that took us into the Himalayas and spent the month with us in the mountains, helping us teach English. He was not a believer. He is, um, I mean, he's a born and raised Buddhist. I mean, it was very hard to share the, mm-hmm. share the gospel through him. Um, in fact, we actually never were able to share the gospel like verbally through him, like, and uh, it was it was very hard. Uh, he was he was pretty um, maybe a little bit hostile to the gospel. I mean, there's a lot of hostility towards Christians like in the Himalayan regions of South Asia. Man, like those people. Daxon was talking earlier about like unengaged people, about how like these people just really haven't heard. Like they just the gospel just hasn't made it there yet. Like Coca-Cola's made it there. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the kids we talked to in that village, they all knew about Lionel Messi. <laughs> they, like they knew about Messi, the, the greatest soccer player of all time. But they couldn't tell you a thing about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was hard. Um, and, and so when you, when you talk, I mean, when you're sharing the gospel with uh, these Buddhists, they're, Bo- they're Buddhist not because they had the choice to be Buddhist. They're Buddhist because... That's all they know. And uh, when we go there, it's like starting at ground zero. Like they, they have no concept of a creator God. And so you have to, well, like when you share the gospel, you have to start it. Really, you have to start at ground zero because they have 
absolutely zero concept of some no framework God. for even understanding that uh, yeah. until it is built up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I know that part of your story, you know, included what some might say, uh, you know, changes of plans. We'll call them divine appointments, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because you told me about a, you know, being at the school where they speak English, mm -hmm. and you're like. You know, you got the chance. How many kids were a part of that? 159. 159. Who <laughs> didn't even have to go through the translator mm -hmm. uh, for that to be able to share the gospel. And uh, even those that it was very difficult for, I know that y'all were there to love them, to pray for them, and to lay the groundwork for future effort too, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we know that that's, that's very vital. Um, one of the things that really struck me as we were talking about y'all's trip and things like that, was just this reality that, okay, if I'm gonna share the gospel with these people, like I have to know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, we talked about this, but like, you have to really know that what you're inviting them into mm -hmm. is going to potentially mm -hmm. introduce a world of, of, of hardship in the physical world that they live in right now. And so the question is, well, why would we do that? Why would we ask them to turn away from their family, away from their culture, away from what they've known, and to place their faith in this Jesus whom they've never heard of? Like, what's the motivation there if that's gonna get them ostracized and even maybe, you know, threat of life? That's a loaded question, and I'm kind of leading you there, I know, but that's heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what y'all did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, the village we were able to share with 159 students, uh, we were able to give two students um, a New Testament um, Bible. Um, and so, while we were doing that, uh, we eventually walked them home. Um, yeah. uh, we were able to walk them home, just kind of talk to them. Um, and while they are walking home, they had their Bibles just like, clenched like this. I try to hide it at first. Um, yeah. They were just walking in the street with the Bible in the hand. Mm. They didn't try to put it in their book sack or anything. Um, but we got to the first guy's house um, and his brother came out to meet us. And his brother was um, fully, I mean, he was a, he was a monk. Um, and so the, the orange robe, the shaved head, um, everything. Um, and we had just gotten finished talking to this guy um, about how they're, what happens to you if you believe in Jesus, you go to heaven, um, and that uh, if you don't, um, you spend eternity apart from God. Um, and so we got there, and the monk just starts talking to us, and he, he basically tells us, you know, as the, the Lama tells us at the, at the, at the monastery, their, their teacher tells them, there is no heaven and hell. There is only love and compassion. Um, mm. And so it was just super hard. Um, we just gave this student access to the um the thing that can save him the greatest thing ever yeah. um but it's it was so hard for me i had to wrestle with this throughout the whole trip um because this was the first week we were there um i had to wrestle with this like that bible could have caused him so much yeah. physical harm in that home with his brother with his parents with his whole community sure mm -hmm. um you know what i mean like it was, I mean, even when his brother came, he hid the Bible. Mm -hmm. and, like he flipped it around so he couldn't see. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, it was something I had to wrestle through. Um, but Jesus says uh, that he didn't come, like he came to divide families. Um, and so, and like believing in Jesus is better than any physical harmship we can have here. Mm -hmm. And any um, disagreements and, and hardships with the family. And like it was something like, I really had to believe in that we were giving him something better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there it is, you know. And if anybody's listening, you know, like the the training that y'all have at IMB and, and, and even just the, the teams that y'all are with, I know that everybody does things very strategically. Mm -hmm. You know, our goal isn't to just roll up in a village and mess everything up. You know, there's sociological uh, factors that are played in, you know, and so everything needs to be accounted for. But you said it. We actually believe that this is the word of life. Mm -hmm. And if we actually believe it, it's going to dictate, it's going to mandate that we do certain things, mm -hmm. that we live certain ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I think that's huge. And, uh, and, and you going was about bringing the word of life. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what a great, I mean, listen, if we really believe that, we don't have to go to the Himalayas to be used by God. Mm -hmm. Like there are people around us every day and this is why I love talking about people who've been to places like this 
Because that passion is not isolated to a geography. Like what the Lord wants to do is to take that same passion and birth it in all of His children everywhere. So that at McNeese and at the mall, we see people for who they are. People who need the Lord. And, uh, and that we would be driven to respond appropriately to that. So that's huge, guys. I know that's a lot. Um, what else about um, if somebody's sitting here watching this and they're thinking, well, I could never go and do that. Like, well, what do you want to say to them? We were talking about this earlier when you were saying, like, the reality of, like, the Great Commission is it applies to every believer. And uh, Daxon was talking about this earlier. Of, like, in a sense, we're all called. And um, We are? Yeah. We are. When Jesus gave the Great Commission, not the Great Suggestion, the Great Commission, when he gave that to his disciples, not all of them went to another country, to another place that speaks another language, but all of them went. They all went somewhere. They all went to share the gospel. Um, so honestly, like, I, I guess, like, if you're a new believer, um, just know that like Jesus' commands, it applies to you. Because you have, been, you have been given the gospel, you are now entrusted with it to bring it to other people. Whether that be um, your family or uh, the people at your school. Uh, there we, We're in a lost and dying world and there are people that don't know the gospel all around us. So, man, there's a, I, I was talking to... Um, a kid at our school, he's from another country, but he's here, he's, he's at, our, at our college. And the other day we asked him, like, how much do you know about Jesus? And he said, absolutely nothing. And he's here and he's been living in a totally reached nation for a year. And so um, start there, sharing the gospel. As far as going on a mission trip, I don't know, I guess I hear a lot of times people are saying like, um, I, I would be willing to go but then don't ever go, you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. And so it's like, if you say you're willing and then don't ever go, like, were you actually willing? Yes, yeah, that's because like an excellent question. Because <laughs> like, yeah, I guess ask yourself the question, like, would you, would you stand like on your front doorstep, put your hands on your hips and go like, man, I'm willing to go to the grocery store today. No, like you wouldn't, like we don't talk like that. We just, we just go, we just go to the grocery store. And just go. And as Christians, it's a no brainer, we just go. Uh, we, we go to the people in our neighborhood, in our family, in our schools, but we also go to the ends of the earth. And uh, I'd say if, if that's something you're nervous about, uh, I would say, man, Jesus gave everything for us. Nothing is too much of a sacrifice for us to give to him. So get on the plane. To get on the plane. <laughs> Got to get a passport. Get a passport. You got to get a passport. There's some practical things there. So, well, Guys, I, I sure hope that people hear this and they're encouraged. Um, that they're motivated to, to follow Jesus more faithfully. This is not just a part of what it means to be a Christ follower. This is, this is um, the foundation. You know, we are called, I love, we've been entrusted with the gospel. We've got to take it out. And so something that I've tried to, um, to be very faithful to, to teach is that giving, going, and praying are all legitimate forms of participating in this mission. And so um, whatever season of life you're in, you know, all of those different categories uh, might look a little bit different. But to some degree, all of them are mandatory for all of us. Give, go, and pray. And so, so much of what this does does require finances. And so I'm thankful um, at Trinity that we've got people that are very generous um, that God's blessed them uh, to be able to very to be very wise with their finances, and so they give, and uh, and maybe maybe that's a good first step for somebody watching, you know, maybe for whatever reason, time of life that they can't actually go very far away. Giving is is a legitimate means of participating. Going is far easier now than it's ever been. That's the the other part of it, though. Mm -hmm. We all need to go. And so I love that um, this Nehemiah team is targeted for teens. Like, guys, you're in the best time of your life to go. Um, if you're waiting for the next season to be less busy, it's not going to be. So now's the time. Um, go. And uh, that may mean to the Himalayas. It may mean to the grocery store. But just go and take the gospel as you go. And then um, just the role of prayer. Uh, you want to say anything about uh, prayer as it relates to the, the work that y'all have done? I know um, that um, throughout the summer we were getting prayer requests. What's it like being there knowing that there are people praying? And I, I don't know. Any testimony to that that you want to share? Yeah, for sure. Prayer is so important when you're in a place like this because mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times we were 
we, like we mentioned, we couldn't share with our translator. They didn't speak English. And so a lot of the times we were just praying. Um, you know what I mean? Like, um, and that's enough. Mm-hmm. You know, if, we, if all we did was we went to this, this village and we just prayed for all of them, um, and we were, that's all God wanted us to do when we were faithful in that, that's enough. Um, and so luckily we were able to share a lot more. Um, but prayer, uh, just for, like, pray for the people there, um, it's, it's so important um, and it's so impactful. Um, and then I would say just a knowing, I mean, we were in a hard place and we, we faced a lot of difficulty. Um, and just knowing that there was tons of people back home praying for us was mm-hmm. super encouraging. Um, and it definitely, we definitely couldn't have done it without it. Mm-hmm. Anything to add? I would say one thing that like I know we prayed for every single day. Mm-hmm. And I know it was always in our prayer requests, like when we sent back to the church, was like pray for our team to be unified. Mm-hmm. Like with you know, without the Holy Spirit working in our team, like we couldn't have had great unity. But yeah, like we prayed for it every day, and there was you know an army of people back home at the church um, praying for us, and like like our our unity this summer was impeccable. Mm-hmm. Like we, yeah. and we couldn't have done it this summer in that hard place without it. Yeah. So thank you for praying if you did. But yeah, absolutely. So what you're saying is when we live on mission and we ground our life in prayer, the unity results. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For me it makes me think, you know, in places, you know, there unfortunately you hear about congregations where there's lack of unity and you know, sometimes we get so preoccupied with things. Mm-hmm. Well maybe lack of unity is a result of a lack of mission and a lack of prayer. And I'm not trying to over-spiritualize it. I think it's just spiritual enough to be true. That, boy, for us here right now, if we wrap our lives in mission and fill our life with prayer, I think unity will also result. So that's a good word for us. I appreciate that. So, Well, guys, we um, are grateful for your commitment to the Lord. We know that um, when we say, well done, that we're really we're, we're bragging on God. Um, but, guys, I, I'm very proud of you all. Um, taking your faith seriously, go and be an example. And uh, I'm very excited to see how the Lord's going to work through your lives um, to mobilize others, but also to continue to use you to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. So thanks for sharing all this with us today. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.